Hello everyone, my name is Sam Sukas and I work with Remax Hallmark here in Leslieville and today we are launching the first celebrity interview for my awesome blog. Our, my guest today is Theo Flammenbaum. He is an interior designer. Welcome Theo. Hi Sam. How are you? Very well, how are you? Good. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions, five or six, maybe seven, about kitchens. And here we are in a really lovely kitchen. Good. All right, so I'll ask the first question and off we go. Awesome. Theo, um, in your mind, what is the one mistake people make too often when they're renovating a kitchen? Right. Well, renovating a kitchen is something that uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's something that requires a lot of planning. And I think that a lot of people forget to have a contingency plan when it comes down to the budgeting of the renovation. So what do you mean by contingency plan? Things all, they always go wrong. So okay. there's, there's always going to be something that uh, you know you didn't think about or little like you know surprises that are gonna come across that will cost money. And even if your house is you know a little older or if your house requires more work than you thought it did, it's always good to have a little bit of your budget to just put aside for contingency. So how much money should that be for a typical kitchen? Typically, I think that the minimum should be at least 5% mm -hmm. of the entire budget. So let's say you have a $40,000 reno uh, budget mm -hmm. for your kitchen. I think that 5% um, of that should go towards the what-ifs. So technically, your budget's $35,000. Okay. Or, well, $5,000 on a $40,000 would be okay. Um, with a renovation of, say, $100,000 in the kitchen. Right. Do you the same kind of dollar amount, or would you make it more of a, a bigger contingency plan? I think the percentage <clears throat> of 5% should just carry over to whatever amount you have with you. So that's, then we're talking about, you know, uh, God, sorry, $100,000, 10% of that is $10,000, $10, mm -hmm. right? So five would it be $5,000. Mm -hmm. It might just not be enough if you right. actually come across something like, you know, a big wiring problem, if you have like, you know, those old school wiring that have to redo the whole house because of the code, you know? So, so if you find novel too, that could be a problem. That will be a problem, okay. yes. Excellent. Theo, I've heard uh, this topic of the triangle and not the Bermuda Triangle in the kitchen. Um, wh wh what is that all about? Tell me, like, what's the function of having a triangle? What, what purpose does it serve? Because I really don't know. Okay, so that theory, that notion comes from the, um, the you know, the triangle actually works as a flow chart for your okay. kitchen. And we're talking about a triangle where the center, the point of the triangle, one of them will be the fridge. Okay. And then that should be, you know, centered to your working areas, so your stove top mm -hmm. or your sink area. So that would create a triangle. Now, nowadays, we don't always get to pick what shape your kitchen is going to have. So having a triangle in your kitchen is not paramount because sometimes it will not be you know, realistic, but that's where it comes from. Because sometimes you're gonna have a galley style kitchen on a one wall only. I've seen those in newer condos for right. spaces. Right, especially in new condos mm -hmm. or very small spaces. Or um, an L-shaped kitchen and uh, it's sometimes just not possible. But if you have an island or an L or U-shaped kitchen, then we can work around that and use that theory to your benefit. But it just comes from a, a flow perspective. Okay. That's where it comes from. So here we are in this beautiful kitchen. Right. It, is it to your liking in terms of that flow or could things have been done differently? It could have been done a little more, a little bit better. It could have been a little more thought out. Uh, here the triangle doesn't really exist. Um, you know, the fridge is to the right, the stove is behind me, and then the sink is right in front of me. So if you're using your fridge a lot and getting things in and out, you're just, you know, the, the side of the island is just right over here. Right. I would have probably swapped the wall-mounted ovens and microwave over there mm -hmm. that you don't use on a daily basis perhaps, and put it over here, and then have your fridge over there, which will create your <coughs> perfect triangle and allow you to go back and forth in a much more, you know, functional efficient. and efficient way to do your cooking. So I guess the fridge really is one of the busiest hubs in the house compared to another. Yes, it is, because mm -hmm. not everybody cooks, not everybody actually knows how to turn on a stove, 
top, so, uh, but the fridge, I think everybody knows how to use that, right? So, that's why. Okay, perfect. That's awesome. Now, I think every kitchen should have something that I like in it, but what do you think every kitchen must have in its design to function? Um, I believe that regardless of your style and what your, you know, feeling that you want to convey in your kitchen is, I think that every kitchen should have smart storage. Right. Storage is something that you know has to be there, has to be smartly placed so everything is put away when it has to go away and it can be easy, easily accessible when you have to get it. Right. So storage, number one thing. Okay. And it's one of our uh, challenges as designers to find proper storage you know, in a small kitchen. Mm -hmm. But I love challenges, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, and the other one is, like we mentioned earlier, it's a functional flow. It's uh, create a traffic flow and a workspace area that will allow you to be in your kitchen and with perhaps somebody else kitchen, uh, cooking at the same time and uh, not bumping to one another or not having like, you know, doors swinging open and hitting one another. So again, that's a kind of, it's a functional thing. Yeah, it's a not a thing function. so much, but it's a, yes. an important part. Very important. Do you see any trends coming up um, in the next five years, 10 years? Um, are there any indications that some new material is going to be discovered and everybody's going to have to have that. For instance, the past 10 years we've been putting glass mosaic tiles on walls as backsplashes. That's a trend. I don't right, particularly right. like it, mm -hmm. but you know, it's a trend. Right. So do you see any trends coming up? Um, well, trend is, trends are a very like, you know, touchy element of design. Because, why, why is that? Well, because the thing is that, you know, if, if someone is going to be spending time and money in renovating something and creating something that is going to be very, that's going to be new to them, mm -hmm. they want it to look good, but that's very subjective. A lot of people like to be trendy because that means they're up to date and they're cool, but that's a very subjective word, you know, what is cool. Like uh, the red Ikea cabinets? Right. From, you know, um, 10 years, 10 years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that dates the kitchen. That dates the room you're working with. I don't like that because, you know, it's kind of like a timestamp. It right? is. And, and once it's there, it's there. So if you want to be trendy, I suggest you be trendy in things that you can eventually change without breaking the bank. Right. So mm -hmm. I think that a timeless, clean cabinetry millwork in the kitchen is where you should invest. And then it can be cool and funky and trendy and the light fixture in the backsplash, which takes a bit of work, but at least it's not, you know, 20 grand, like changing the cabinets all so over again. So it's a cheaper kind of right. change you could think. Exactly. Okay. Handles, another thing that, you know what, uh, you know, right now they're all into the, uh, the bars and, you know, the clean lines and who knows what, you know, next five years will bring. French for cocoa? Perhaps. <laughs> or Louis the 15th or something. There you go. So, um, uh, so I would actually invest the trendy energy in things that we can change easily or that will not break the bank. That's a great idea. So I, I, I need you to explain to me now, why should someone hire a designer? What's the benefit to them? Right. Um, I see lots of renovations mm -hmm. and you know when a designer's not involved because... They, they think they can do it on their own. Yes. Right. So, right. Why, Theo, why should I hire you? Well, I, I, I can give you like, you know, like, dozens of reasons why every anything from like you know the professional insights the contacts and uh, and resources that we bring to the project to the time management that you know we bring as a project manager right. to this very stressful you know uh well maybe i'm gonna ask a different question okay what do you theo flamenbaum or theo flamenbaum interiors bring to your clients as a designer what do you do that's different my approach to design is very personalized. I don't like to impose my personal aesthetics onto a client's house. Mm -hmm. I like to work with the client to create the space that will work for them and only for them because it's their space, it's their money. So I like to spend a bit of time getting to know their needs and objectives, their lifestyle and their personality so I can create something that will work for them. So a kitchen that is uh, that I'm doing for a family with small kids will not be the same kitchen that I will design for a young bachelor that has a Bay Street job. Um, it's all about the client. So it's making that space functional to the person's lifestyle 
and personality and needs. So none of your kitchen designs are ever going to look. No. So they're not cookie cutter. Ever. Okay. That's awesome. There will be like a little like you know materials that I like to use because I think they're like you know they work well, such as quartz for countertops. Right. They're stunning and they're very practical and they pretty much marry with all the styles that I'm you know I can work with. And the colors can be almost any color you want. Well, it's it's man made, so it can be pretty much whatever you want. And now they actually look like marble. Sister Stone yeah. has beautiful collections of. Uh, parts that look like marble hmm. so you know sky's the limit but that's my approach and and the, at, at the end of the day my job is to save you time and energy during a very stressful period of your life mm -hmm. and that there's there's no price tag on that Theo I want to thank you for coming in today uh, it's great to have you and some great advice it's been my pleasure anytime now if you'd like to hire Theo to design your kitchen all his information is on our website have a great day and we'll see you soon.